This is the Madone. It's considered one of the most advanced bicycles ever made. But engineers continue to refine this revolutionary machine, making it even lighter and faster. And with their latest model, they didn't just improve on a previous design, they completely broke the mold. So this is the state-of-the-art greatest bike ever built? Is that what we're looking at here? As of today, <laughs> <laughs> this okay. is the best bike that we've got. What gives a road bike like the Madone its edge? It all starts with the frame. Everything else is secondary. This is the material that revolutionized the modern road bike. Carbon fiber. The engineers at Trek were among the first to manufacture a bike's entire frame and fork using this lightweight, super strong material. It's the same stuff that's used to build stealth bombers. Each sheet is only five one thousandths of an inch thick, as thin as a dollar bill. But notice that the grain of the fibers is unidirectional. When workers at Trek's molding area layer these sheets on top of each other, the fiber patterns crisscross, giving the finished piece its strength. This is going this way, and this is going this way. Right. So this is like a 10-layer stack or something. All of our ply stacks are different thicknesses. In certain areas of the frame, we only may have four to five plies of material. In other areas that require greater strength, we may have upwards of 40 plies of material. And that's just saving weight as you go across the different parts of the frame. Absolutely. Standard bike frames have long been made of steel, which is heavy and slower, or aluminum, which is lighter but less durable. But the Madone's carbon fiber frame makes it stronger than steel, yet as light as plastic. And the lighter the bike, the faster it goes. This thing is so light. We make a couple of different versions, and this one weighs about 1,000 grams, which is 2.2 pounds. And the, the incredible thing, Marshall, is this is actually the heavy frame. <laughs> the neat thing about this is that a water bottle weighs more than the frame does. So when you put the water bottle on, you've doubled the weight of your frame. <laughs> Jeez. Finding a way to make the newest Madone even lighter was only one of the challenges facing Trek engineers. They also wanted to make it sturdier and more comfortable. For months, they reevaluated everything about the Madone's frame the size of the top tube and down tube, the design of the front fork and bottom bracket, and the position of the seat post. You might not notice the innovations, but they definitely have an impact on the way this bike performs. Once the carbon fiber sheets have been layered, this carbon cutting machine then cuts them into shapes. The workers take these shapes, known as preforms, and assemble them into a series of pieces called a kit. Each kit will become one section of the frame. This is going to be a fork. 20 different pieces to make one fork. Yes. The molding operator then places the preforms in the casting die. This is where the carbon fiber sheets become three-dimensional parts of the frame. Now you can see that she is working the material down into the mold to form the shape. The preform is designed to fit almost perfectly into the mold as she does this. Some of the carbon fiber preforms are laid on top of each other. That adds extra strength to vulnerable parts of the bike, such as the fork, while leaving other areas, such as the seat mast, more flexible. Flexibility and strength are key when you're riding 100 or so miles in a day. Again, you can see the directional nature of the carbon fiber, but she's only putting it in one portion of it, so we can build up thicker layers in places that require more strength or stiffness and fewer layers in areas that don't. After the operator fits all the shapes into the mold, a molding press squeezes the two halves together and heats them. 
We were forbidden to shoot this stage of the process. That's because the precise combination of heat and pressure that forms the carbon fiber parts is one of Trek's most guarded trade secrets. When it is all done coming out of the press, this is actually the finished <laughs> part that, that is actually formed from flexible, pliable right. material to a stiff head lug. That's unbelievable. Like, if I were to really pull on this, could I break it? No. no <laughs> Not you at all? You, you, would, you, would hurt, you would hurt yourself. This section of the frame is as strong as steel, which created another challenge for the engineers. How do you make something so sturdy also be comfortable? After a lot of testing and prototyping, Madone's creators came up with new aerodynamic shapes to achieve this delicate balance. And there are specific shapes throughout the whole frame. The down tube shape gives us a stiffness to make the bottom bracket efficient. The top tube is actually wide as you go from front to back, and that helps with the front end stiffness for handling. Okay. And then one other thing that we did is this is a whole new design in the seat mast, and this has been shaped so that this part actually flexes as you ride it as a suspension system. The Madone's new design places the alignment of the seat mass slightly back from the center tube. This allows the carbon fiber to flex and give to the contours of the road. So you actually have a bike that's more efficient, stiffer, handles better, and rides more comfortably. Now that the parts of the frame are formed, it's time to start putting them together. The people at Trek Bikes have let me into their factory for the day to see how they manufacture the all-new Madone. Its super light, super strong frame makes the Madone one of the world's leading performance bikes. Once the parts are formed, workers bring them here to the bonding area to be assembled. They're actually glued together since bolts, brackets, and screws would weigh the bike down. The glue itself is a unique blend of epoxy and other ingredients and is another of Trek's trade secrets. After workers bond all seven parts together, they mount the frame on this fixture and then tighten the joints to keep them snug. Right now, everything is very, it can move around a little bit because the glue is still soft. Right. So until we harden the glue by curing it, we hold it in this fixture, that goes into the oven, and that ensures that the frame is in perfect alignment. This curing oven heats the frames to a temperature of 180 degrees Fahrenheit. It takes 30 or 40 minutes to cure the adhesive that bonds the parts together. Workers then sand down the frame and fork to ensure smooth and seamless connections between the joints. The finished frames and forks then go on to the factory's conveyor system for the next step. Here, highly trained frame artists individually paint each Madone. Riders even have the option to customize their own bikes, with a choice of over one million combinations of colors and schemes, including custom decals. Once workers have painted and decorated a bike, they place the frame and fork back up onto the conveyor system one last time. Here, an automated finishing machine sprays the frame with an anti-corrosive sealant to keep the paint from chipping and the decals from peeling. When engineers first designed the Madone frame, they put it through one additional step, the stress test. What are you doing to this poor bicycle? Well, welcome to our little shop of horrors. This is one of our low cycle fatigue tests that we do on our frames. There's a pneumatic cylinder over here, yeah. and basically it is driving the frame into a brick wall and then trying to pull the frame apart. And how many times can you do this to this poor frame before it explodes? Well, that's one of the other great things about carbon fiber and composites. They have basically an infinite fatigue life, where an aluminum frame might go a certain number of cycles on this test. This frame we could turn on, walk away, and come back in a year or two, and it would still be doing the same thing.